Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Web Antonio. I'm Tim Clyde, this time coming to you from Venice in Italy. Today I'm coming to you from one of the most photographed landmarks in all of Venice, the spectacular San Marco. Piazza San Marco is the largest public space in Venice and is dominated by major structures such as the former Duches Palace at the Lagoon End and St. Mark's Basilica next door. The cathedral dates back to the 10th century, while the square itself has a history which goes back an additional 100 years. Built in a style blended from the Italo-Byzantine tradition and the Gothic tradition, it features numerous mosaics and painted frescoes, which face out onto the square. The interior features soaring ceilings covered in golden mosaics, but photography inside is strictly prohibited, so please trust me when I tell you that it's more than worth the 5 euro entry fee. Directly outside the church is its bell tower, standing almost 100 meters tall. As you walk around St. Mark's Square, notice the flood defences. The piazza is one of the first parts of the city to flood in autumn, when the highest tides come. Additionally, in this most touristed of Venice attractions, local authorities have started a campaign to encourage the millions of visitors to respect the city which they're visiting. The basic requests include not to litter, not to dive into the canals for a swim, and not to walk around the city dressed like it's a beach resort. Sadly, these are all issues that Venice deals with, and it's fair to say that the patience of some locals has worn thin in the past. While in Venice, I'd also recommend you to get away from the big attractions for a while and see some other sites too. One such place is the Venetian Ghetto, which housed the Jewish population of Venice from the 16th century to the 18th century. During this time, Jewish people were forced to live in this separate section of the city. Nowadays, the district is still home to a significant number of Jewish residents and businesses, including kosher food shops and also synagogues and a museum of Jewish art. There are also various monuments dedicated to the Jewish people who have been persecuted throughout history. Other parts of the city are also worth exploring, such as the Castello district. This is a newer, more open, but still historic district, which is mostly residential, but it's also home to many important churches and parks, and it's the focal point for the Biennale of Venice. The other thing that I simply couldn't get enough of in Venice were some of the elaborate window displays, proffering everything from homewares to Venetian masks. At night, I'd recommend going to La Cantina for dinner at least once. This is one of the best places in Venice to try cicchetti, the traditional Venetian snacks served in an evening similar to tapas or appetizers. The service is notoriously slow here, but this is all part of the experience. To sit for two or three hours, let the world go by and just simply enjoy the sumptuous food. Sunset is when St. Mark's Square really comes to life. I'd recommend spending at least one evening here, even if it's flooded by other tourists doing the same thing. and then later in the evening when the music starts up. While in Venice, we stayed at the Hotel Paginelli, which was conveniently located right near St. Mark's Square and San Zaccaria Vaporetto stop and had wonderful views out across the lagoon. And that's all from Urban Dunia for this time, and in fact from Italy. Thank you very much for being a part of my journey. Next Sunday I'm heading down under to start a new series of the East Coast of Australia in summer. So thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and tune in again next time.